Okay, now what we're going to do is the cotangent, right? So y equals the cotangent of theta. Or you could call it x. Do you remember what the tangent looked like? Yeah, Let's put it in here. Kind of like kind of looked like a cube function, yeah. See how it swept up like this? Understand why the uh, period's only 180 degrees, because it goes from negative 90 to 90, and then look, from here to here, it repeats the exact same pattern. Whereas the secant and the cosecant, you had to have both, the top and the bottom, didn't you, in order to start that pattern over again. So that covered 360, but this only covers 180. Now let's think about what it's going to be. Let's put some points in there. Let's do, um, we'll just write, oopsie daisy, i got to use the pen. Let's put, um, let's go a different color. Let's go, uh, it's purple. How is that purple? All right, so um, let's do the same thing that we did before, but we're just going to do it with the tangent. So here's your angle, here's your tangent, and here's your cotangent. All right, so let's put some main angles in there. So let's put 0, um, 30, 45, 60, 90. Let's see what happens. What's the tangent at 0 degrees? Here's 0 degrees right there. It's 0. Good. Let's do 30. What do you, I don't know. We got it. At 30 degrees. What's the tangent at 30 degrees? Do you have that memorized? Punch out a calculator. Who's going to do this quick for me? I need, I need fast answers. 1.577. Oh, just 0.5? Okay. What's the tangent of 45? It's 1, right? You should know that. What's the tangent of 60? That's the, you can just pl plug it in, but it's the square root of 3, isn't it? Yeah, 1.7. 1.7, and the tangent of 90? Right here? It's undefined, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. All right, what about the cotangent? Cotangent is the inverse of this. What's the cotangent of 0, the inverse of 0? It's undefined. Good. What's the, uh, it's a half, so it's 2, right? That's a 1, so it's 1. What's the inverse of that? 1.7. It's like point. Point five, point six. About 0.6? Okay. And what's the inverse of this one? That would be zero, wouldn't it? All right, so let's put some uh, points in here. Did I get rid of the... I don't remember getting rid of the tangent. I guess I did. There it is. Okay. All right, so watch this. Let's put some points in here. Um, zero is undefined, so what are we going to put here? dotted line is the asymptote, okay? So make sure on your graph, if you were to graph this on a test or quiz or something like that, you put the dotted line there. That's important. Okay, and at 30 degrees, we're going to put, what? A 2. Right there. At 45 degrees, we're going to put a 1. So that'll hit right there. At 60 degrees, we put 0. 0.6, which would be about right here. And at 90 degrees, we put a 0. Now, I guess we could keep going, but do you have an idea what it's going to do at this point? Where's the next asymptote? 180. At 180. Okay, see wherever zero was on the tangent, same thing with that sine and cosine, right? Some of the same things work here. All right, so what do you think it does? It goes like this, right? And yeah, we could put the points in, we just are running out of time, and it should go down like that. Let's see if it actually is. And right there, yep does exactly what we thought it did, doesn't it? Yeah. Okay. All right, let's get rid of the tangent so we can see it a little bit nicer. All right, so that's the uh, cotangent because it keeps on going around, you keep going around a circle over and over and over again, right? Uh, a couple. I want, I, I'd say two or three, all right? I want to at least see a pattern. I don't, I don't want just yeah. one line. I want to like see... Guess at least go around the circle once, right? You're going to have two of these, right, to go around the circle one time. Yeah. So at the very least, two. But I would say I would say th about three of these. If it repeats a pattern like that, same thing with the cosine and the sine, all right, that wave, all right, I want to see, I want to see at least, you know, uh, two periods, you know, on oh, here, really? like an up and down, up and down, you know, just to give a basic idea of what it looks like. I shouldn't say at least. I'd say, I'd say around there, okay? At the very least, one full period. That's the very least you should put on there. But just to make it look a little nicer, just go one more up and down. You don't have to have negatives, but it would be kind of nice if you did, just to kind of spread it out through the negatives and the positives. All right? Yeah, you don't have to go super, super far, no. All right? So that should be good. Does that make any sense? Now, what about if we did... Um, 
No, that's good enough. We'll just stop right there. I think I gave you enough information on that. Mm -hmm. All right, so now the homework that I gave you yesterday, you should be able to finish it up, okay, because you're going to have cosecant, secant, and cotangent on there. Now you have a better idea of what it looks like. They even put a chart. Do you see that chart right there? It's got all three of them in one chart. All right, so if you forget, if you didn't take notes on this, you can look in that book, and it kind of gives you an idea. All right? And, of course, you can always look back on YouTube just to get an idea of what's going on if you took a nap in my class today, right? Not that anybody would ever do that, but... Brandon. All right. <laughs> All right. That's it. Have a good weekend.